Kim Jong Un took a 60 hour train ride yep. to Vietnam for a second summit with President Trump. Yeah. Uh, not Nixella. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. Nixella. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, I would love to see what that train looks like and uh, get on that yeah. thing. Check yeah. it out. Yeah. I, I imagine a bunch of Intel services have it pretty well wired, but maybe we can. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there were. WikiLeak that does. Well, there were reports in the past about, you know, from like leaked, you know, the chef who defected. Right. Yeah, yeah. Of like the finest French wines are brought in and all this food is shipped yeah. in and. They're women and yeah, grifters going to grift. Yeah, I guess. it yeah. seems like a kind of uh, bad Netflix series, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so Kim Jong Un has made it to Vietnam. Uh, Trump, I think, is en route as we speak. But before he left, there was a whole bunch of. Um, but before he left, there was a whole bunch of uh, shaping the battlefield in the yeah. press. Uh, Trump's yeah. advisors were either downplaying what they hoped to get out of the second meeting, or you know, the John Bolton, Trump's national security advisor, his camp was spinning that they were worried about their negotiator being too eager to cut a deal or even Trump being too eager to cut a deal. So I'm curious, like, what do you think Trump would need to get out of Kim Jong-un in this second summit to make it successful or at least just worth the time? So in my mind, if we're grading this not on a curve for yeah. Trump, right, um, what we need to see is verifiable progress in rolling back North Korea's nuclear or missile program. Mm -hmm. That's it. Again, I've said I don't think that we should expect him to eliminate all of nuclear, the nuclear weapons in North Korea. That's not going to happen quickly. However, with this level of diplomatic engagement, with this level of praise of Kim Jong-un, with clearly the kind of fraying of, of North Korea's international isolation, we should be getting something on the issue we care about, which is the nuclear program. So we'll put aside all the symbolism and mm -hmm. t talk of peace. Are they letting international inspectors into their facilities? Are they taking steps to roll back pieces of their nuclear program that, again, can be verified by international inspectors? Are they taking steps to dismantle parts of their missile program? If they're not doing that, then the, the, the reason we went into these negotiations, yeah. we're not making any progress on it. And by the way, it's not enough for North Korea to say, well, there's a building that is really important to our program and right. we're going to blow it up. Like, no, we need an inventory of what their program is and we need international inspectors, not North Koreans, you know, giving a show to the media right. to, to assess, are they actually taking steps to roll this back? And if, if they're not doing that, then we're making absolutely no progress against the stated objective of this diplomacy in the first place. Yeah, you mentioned something important, which is uh, one of the first things we were supposed to try to get was an inventory of all their, how many nuclear weapons yeah. they have, all the facilities. Where, where they are, yeah. Uh, yeah, like the missile silos, yeah. you know, what uh, weapons testing sites We've, I don't think we've gotten any. We haven't even gotten that. So what are we going to even check progress against? That's right. And and we cannot, and, and I, I implore our listeners, if the North Koreans are the ones who are vouching for what they're doing, it, don't just totally discount it, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, because they've done this in the past where they, they take a bunch of reporters to some building and say, this was really important to our program, and then they blow it up in front mm -hmm. of everybody. And what... Like, what the fuck do you know about what's in that building? They probably no. moved everything that was important in that building to some other place, right? Yeah. This is why their entire international inspections regimes and organizations like the International Atomic Energy Agency that did the Iraq, uh, uh, the uh, Iran inspections, that need to be involved here. They also tried to do the Iraq inspections. They did. And if we <laughs> yeah, let them yeah. keep going, we might have uh, verified that war. they didn't have weapons. That's right. That's <laughs> a good point. Uh, 2002, 2003 trip down memory lane. I've been, I've been reading Fiasco by Tom Ricks, and oh, it's yeah. making me Boy, you're really diving into Iraq here. Yeah. The second Iraq I book. feel like I sh everyone else read that book 14 years yeah, ago, yeah. so I feel like I'm a little behind the curve, but it's, he's a, it's a great book. Yeah, well, and, and there's a whole library of those books on Iraq that were written that talk about the books the blob is <laughs> yeah forgotten yeah, forgotten about it. right yeah. right um so you, you sort of hinted at, at this but according to various leaks um the, the intel officials still worrying on background to reporters are worried that trump could offer to formally uh end the war on the korean peninsula which has technically been ongoing since the 1953 armistice agreement uh he could open or offer to open an interest section in north korea which is basically a step down from an embassy and let them do the same in washington uh, he could offer to pull U.S. troops out of Korea, although uh, the Trump officials are trying to shut the door on that even being a possibility. I mean, when I look at those things, uh, you know, an interest section or more dialogue uh, feels like a good step maybe. But I mean, how, how much do you worry about him giving away the store here or maybe the press being uh, distracted by these other things that are not related to the yeah. nuclear program? Well, those two things are directly connected, mm -hmm. right? Because... Like, it's been very clear since Singapore that all Donald Trump really cares about is his ability to create a spectacle. 
and his ability to look like he's winning something, right? Um, so again, the question was always, is this going to diminish North Korea's nuclear program in any way? All these other things are secondary. Now, I think that these things are much easier to get, right? Because North Korea, what do they not want to do? They don't want to give up their nuclear weapons or their missiles. They don't give a shit whether, you know, we say, in fact, they have wanted to declare, uh, to, to try to pursue a peace treaty. Because to them, a peace treaty is the first step to removing U.S. troops from South Korea. Right. So part of the reason why there are U.S. troops in South Korea is because, you know, we never signed a peace treaty. Technically, there's this kind of state of war. But every, you know, we, it's not like we've been fighting a war for the last several decades. But the risk there is that, you know, Trump wants to say, I achieve peace. Um, so on a piece of paper, he could sign a commitment to reach a peace treaty. But number one, that does nothing to address the nuclear program. Number two, that could be the predicate to removing troops from South Korea, even though you haven't dealt with this threat from North Korea, mm -hmm. and then leaving North Korea as the stronger party on the yeah, Korean Peninsula, yeah, yeah. right? Huge um, army, what, a couple million man yeah, army? Yeah, I mean, which also sends a signal to anybody else in that part of the world who kind of counted on us to- the Japanese. Japanese, Taiwan, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and, and so to me, it's quite likely that Trump goes in for this symbolic stuff. The press, you know, like I'll, I'll give you an example. I remember when there were these exchanges of remains, right? Mm -hmm. The Again, North Koreans gave back U.S. The North service Koreans members who brought been lost. some remains from uh, the Korean War, or at least they said. I mean, right, we still have to right, verify right. this. Um, and it was like a massive story. And look, it's important. And I'm, I, I'm, I hope, for the sake of families, that yeah. some of those remains are found by DNA to be matches with uh, U.S. service members who were lost. But again, it, it, it's it, in the scheme of American national security interest and the nuclear program, this is not what Trump said he was getting into this diplomacy to do. Yep. And so my worry is that the North Koreans are using these symbolic things to play Trump. Yep. They want to be legitimized as a nuclear weapons state. Um, and they can give up everything else except their nuclear weapons. And Trump is falling right into that trap. Look, the fact that we've been having this conversation, if Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton were president, we wouldn't be like, this would be unacceptable. Yeah, you know, would, the the would. Congress would be freaking out. The media would be holding us to a much higher standard. The media holds Trump to a much lower standard on this. And I think there are two other points worth making. This man has called Trump the Iran deal a catastrophe. When Iran shipped out 98% of its nuclear material and submitted to inspections, how how can people account for the intellectual dishonesty and inconsistency of of essentially a bunch of symbolic concessions but nothing substantive with North Korea mm -hmm. and a lot of concessions from us by the way because we're legitimizing Kim and the right. sanctions regime is falling apart um, how is that okay and and it makes any sense to be pulling out the Iran deal but the other thing is Trump is sending a message to every other country that might be considering whether or not to get nuclear weapons that you should do that. Because, look, we're opening the door for North Korea to walk into the nuclear club. He's heaping praise on Kim Jong-un. So if you're one of these countries that has been at that you know, decision point, the lesson you're taking from this is, OK, if I can just get this nuclear weapon, then the United States will welcome me with open arms. Yeah. And then we have India and Pakistan all replicated all over the world. Yeah, it's scary. And meanwhile, you know, The Washington Post wrote up this piece this morning about how Trump is back trying to sell people that he's executing a madman theory of foreign policy where... You know, he acts yeah. crazy. He sends a bunch of shitty tweets about fire and fury and nuclear annihilation. And somehow that brought Kim Jong-un to the table. I mean, I think it's it's laughable on its face. But you also point out that Kim and, and previous North Korean leaders have always wanted these talks. It, it benefits them. And, and by the way, like Kim Jong-un has been kicking his ass at the table ever since he came to the yeah. table. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have given a lot up. You know, we have, have two heads of state summits total legitimization of Kim Jong-un, you know, th this Del praise for him that I'm sure is playing on a loop in North Korea on state-run television, the President delayed of the States. Delayed military exercises. Delayed with military the exercises. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that the international isolation of North Korea has been lifted. Um, probably the sanctions regime is fraying and have gotten literally nothing in return on the nuclear issue, right? So, yeah, maybe the madmen stuff, like, had something to do with the beginning of this, but the, the, the Kim Jong-un then has basically been running circles around Donald Trump at the negotiating table ever since. Yeah.